Education neuroscience is a research domain that is vast and expanding. As educational practitioners, we are often interested in bridging theory with practice. So we might be tempted to ask, as Brewer did, is this bridge a bridge too far, the bridge between neuroscience and education? There is a debate going on, but scholars agree that education neuroscience can inform classroom practice. If we stop to think a little, this relationship between teaching and learning, we realize that there is an imbalance. We are inundated with knowledge on teaching, new styles, new approaches to teaching. However, the learning component receives less attention. So, how can we learn new things about our brain, about brain plasticity, what happens during the learning process? How do internal and external factors affect the learning process? All these findings can impact educators in the classroom. Imindo Young, who is a leading researcher, offers us a pragmatic approach. She tells us that educators and neuroscientists can work together to produce what she calls the Holy Grail. What is this Holy Grail? The Holy Grail is this new information which can help us develop learning environments which are more conducive to learning. So yes, educational neuroscience can inform different levels in the educational system and it can help practitioners in the classroom, educational leaders and managers and policy makers to provide a better learning experience for our students. It is crucial that a fire within us continues to burn in pursuit of an understanding of educational neuroscience, how learning occurs and how meaningful and expert learning experiences can be provided to children to empower them through an analysis of systems and networks of connections occurring within the brain. Whilst moving away from the idea that the elements of cognition, that is thinking, affectation, feeling and conation, doing, can be considered separately. In our early years in Malta, we are implementing the emergent curriculum. This is derived from a philosophy of teaching and learning revolving around specific observations of young children, whereby educators plan daily activities based on the children's interests in response to observations carried out, with the intent to facilitate the learning and development of each child in the classroom. Therefore, it is even more important that our educators acquire an understanding of neuroscience for the benefit of our educational system, especially with reference to the early years, when the child's brains are expanding at a fast rate and educational opportunities given to children at this stage encourage the connections made within the cerebral cortex, which is the grey matter of the brain, between more than 100 billion neurons. All this is happening before the child turns five. It is sad to think that if this was not the case, so many neurons would die out if not used.